In this video, we'll take a look at how to use templates to create a simple steel truss, as well as how to analyze and design it using Risa 3D. So first off, we're gonna go into our model settings to go ahead and choose the appropriate steel code for our project. So we'll just go to the codes tab and just select the appropriate code for our project here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this AISC 15 360 16 LRFD code and just press okay to save that setting. And now we can go ahead and create some basic load combinations for our project. So these are actually uh, values that are gonna be used in the load combinations once we generate those. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and generate a dead load as well as a live load basic load case. So if I just type in D here in the category, the program will actually choose the appropriate category. And I'm just gonna type in negative one in the Y gravity column. And that just tells the program to use the self weights of the elements that I model in the program uh, in the analysis. So now I'm just gonna add a live load, basic load case, and again, type L here, and it will choose the live load for me. Now that we've created basic load cases, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this spreadsheet and click the load combination spreadsheet to uh, generate some load combinations. So I'll just click the load combination generator, and I'll go ahead and select the appropriate code that matches the material code that I've selected. So I'm gonna use strength load combinations to match up with the fact that I chose a strength steel code. So I'm gonna select these and I'm gonna leave the rest of these options as they are, press generate. And now you can see in the background here, I've the program has generated for me some deflection load combinations as well as load combinations for checking strength. Now we can also go ahead and set some member design rules. So to do that, we'll just access the member design rules spreadsheet over in the data entry in the explorer window. And this is basically uh, a way for the user to give the program some parameters when determining a, a appropriate design based on your force demands as well as your deflection criteria. So we can tell it here actually a maximum depth that we'd like it to use. So I'm gonna say I want a max depth of, let's say four inches on my members. And the widths I'm gonna go ahead and leave alone. And the bending check and shear check value, this is actually the demand capacity ratio or the unity check value um, in terms of how, how far you'd like to push this value. So I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, 0.9 to say that I only ever want my optimized member to be at a 0.9 maximum demand capacity ratio. Now we can go over to the deflections tab in the spreadsheet. And this is gonna reference the load combinations that we already generated. So I can click from here and choose deflection one. So these are the names of different load combinations. And then you see here, I can actually change the ratio if I wanted to, maybe let's say I want it to be 180 for that load combination. And then I can choose load combination two and do the same thing for the third column. And so you could open up the load combination spreadsheet side by side so that you know what particular load combo or what basic load cases are involved in each load combination. So for example, load combination two contains live load. And so this fits well for my criteria where I want the maximum ratio to be L over 360. So now I'll go ahead and close out of these two spreadsheets. Now to generate our truss, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the templates. So I, you can see here we have a large list and I'm gonna go ahead and use the truss option here. And I'll select a truss type as, let's say we want to use a Warren type A. And now we can also go ahead and change the amount of panels in each side of the truss. So this is currently set to four and four. We'll go ahead and leave those as the defaults. And these are gonna be the lengths of each increment. So I'm gonna go ahead and change these to four foot increments. And I'll just do the same thing for the right side. And here I can actually change the dimensions of the truss as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and make, I'll make the ends four foot tall, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make the middle, let's say seven feet tall. So we'll get that taper in our truss. Now we have a few options here for the section sets that we're gonna to use to uh, actually uh, in the construction of our truss. And what I'm gonna do is click this ellipses button, and this will allow me to go ahead and edit the existing section set, HR1. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna create one for the top and the bottom cord since I want those to be the same size. So I'll just call it top slash bot cord. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, tube steel for these cords. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and choose a tube here. And then I'm gonna say my starting point will be, uh, let's say four by four by quarters. So I'll press okay there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the 
corresponding design list, which would be square tube in our case, and then A500 grade B rect. And now I can go ahead and press OK. And so assign that to top cord and bottom cord, but also to the verticals and diagonals. So maybe I want to use a smaller member for those. And so what I'll do is click the ellipses button, say create a new section set, and now I'm going to name this appropriately. So I'll say vert slash diag. And I'm going to go ahead and change the shape again to a tube. But my starting point for this, I'd like to be something smaller. Uh, maybe I want to use a, let's say, a three by three by quarter. So I'll press OK there. And again, we can just choose the right design list for our shape, that being square tube in this case. And then again, A500 grade B rect, press OK. And now I have another option to select for the verticals and diagonals. I have a few options here. If I wanted to actually rotate those members uh, flat, um, I could change it to 90 or 180 and 270. And then we have some input here for the unbraced lengths. So what I like to do is type in the, the code called segment. And what that actually is, is a, it's a code for the program to go ahead and it basically takes any point along a member where a node falls as a point of being braced. So what I like to do is the fact that since we're going to build this truss and the models will be physically modeled and those nodes will inherently be placed, I'm just going to tell the program to reference those node placements and use that to calculate the unbraced lengths. So I'm just going to go ahead and just control V in each one of these boxes. And we have a few more options here for the truss dimensions. You can do a center line to center line or an out to out as far as how you'd like the program to build your truss. And then you can change if you want the web members to be pinned pinned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that, but I want my cords to not be pinned, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that unchecked. And then the increments or the copies can actually be increased. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's say I want to create uh, multiple of these to start the foundations for my uh, roof system. So I'm going to make six trusses and I'm going to have them be spaced at uh, 10 feet. So now all I have to do is press OK. And the program has now generated my series of roof trusses. So I'm going to go ahead and center this. And now what I can do is render this and make sure my shapes are correct. Um, everything's to scale so we can look at that and be happy with it. We can also unrender the shapes and we can display some of the member label options. So there's a drop down menu for you or you can also toggle by clicking multiple times on the button. So let's say if I wanted to double check what the shape was, I can click shape. I can zoom in and see that there are four by four top and bottom cords and then three by three webs. I could also look at the local axes, for example. I can also look at the uh, length of the members by clicking the length here. And we have the exact lengths now. Um, and so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is delete some of these trusses and then we're going to go ahead and load up one of them just for the sake of illustration. So to do this, I'm going to go into the YZ view, clicking YZ here, and I'm going to go ahead and just select all of them except for one. And just press my delete key. Now I can go back to isometric view, and now we're left with just one truss. So let's go back to X, Y, so we're looking at it face on. Now we can start with loading our structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the member labels just to give us a cleaner interface. And now what we can do is come to the draw load section in the home tab. Now we can add a point load, for example, and I'm gonna use the basic load case dead load that we've created. And let's say I want a negative, let's say one kip point load, and I can locate it either on a percent basis along the length of the member, or I can locate it on a explicit foot basis. So let me say just 50% in this case. So I'll press click to apply, and now I can click this top cord member and it's applied it. But you can see it's at an angle there, so what I can do is click at the load, and then I can change the direction type to be the global Y axis, because currently it's set for the local Y. And now we have it going completely vertically, which is what we're looking for. I can also add a line load to this. So what I'll do is click back to the home tab. I'll go to line load and I'm going to change my basic load case to live load now and then pick a start and end magnitude. So if I actually bring this window over, you can see the units here are kit per foot. So I'm going to go ahead and run a negative 0.1 kit per foot start and end magnitude. Press click to apply and then go ahead and click the member that I'd like it to be applied to. So here you see that it's uh, currently displaying the load that we've just applied, but you can actually display the loads that we previously applied by toggling through each basic load case, or you can actually change it to look 
by load category and even load combination. So if we look at a load combination that contains both of these, now you see this is the factored version of the loads that we've applied that are contained in that load combination. Now before we can solve the model, we're gonna to need to add some boundary conditions. So let's go ahead and click the Home tab, click the Boundary Conditions button, and I wanna add a pin and roller just to have this be a simply supported truss. So I'll click Pin here, click to apply, and then just box over the node. In the same way I can do that for the opposite end with a roller. Boundary Conditions, Roller, click to apply, and I'll do that on the other node. Now let's go to Isometric View. So now it's important to remember that this is a 3D program, so what we need to do now is prevent the truss from falling out of plane. So to do that, we can simply rubber band over one of the nodes and then go to the Z line because that corresponds to this global axis and we can type in F and what that tells the program is that we want fixity for translation in the Z direction. So I'll go ahead and do that for all of these top nodes just to continuously provide that restraint. Go ahead and type F again. And then I can do it for uh, this group of nodes, type F again, and then I have two more here that I can select. So now our truss is fully restrained for out of plane direction. So at this point, we can go ahead and actually solve the model. So we're gonna go ahead and solve a batch with an envelope. So we can go to the Home tab, press Solve, and Batch plus Envelope. So batch just means that it's gonna go ahead and save the results for each individual load combination for us to reference if we need to look at the forces on a load combo by load combo basis. And the envelope will provide us the overall maxes from all the load combinations looked at at a single time. So now we can just go ahead and press solve. So the first thing I like to do personally when solving a model is look at the deflected shape to make sure it's doing what I would expect. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the XY view and I'm just gonna turn off the loads for now, and I can click this deflected shape button and say with undeflected shadow. So this is for load combination six. This is the, the deflected shape we're looking at here. And so it's not deflecting uh, quite as much as I, I might like to see what the shape is. So what I can do is go into the view tab and go to the results button and I can actually magnify this deflection. So I'll come to the deflection tab and go to the scale and just kind of move it up on this sliding scale and press OK. So this gives me a better idea of the deflection we're seeing. And I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing because it makes sense with what I would expect for the type of loading that we applied. Now I can also undeflect this shape. And the next thing I personally like to look at is the member forces. So we have a drop down menu for you and you can click the Y shear or you can look at the torques and even the moments. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look at the shear and all the members. So here's our shear diagrams displayed for us. And you can see here, we don't have the magnitudes displayed yet. I have those turned off, but at the same way, we um, change the settings for the deflection. We can do the same thing for the member forces by going to the view tab, go to the results button, and then go to the members tab. And for the magnitudes, we just check that on and go ahead and turn this up on size and press okay. And now we have actual magnitudes on the member forces for us. If I go back to the Home tab, we can toggle through these different member forces. I can take a look at the moment diagrams as well. And additionally, I can turn these off and we can even look at the reactions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check this box for the Y direction and see here that these are the reactions based on load combination six here. So now that we've taken a look at the graphical options, we can also take a look at the spreadsheet results. So to do that, we can go to the Code Check spreadsheet here in the Explorer window. And this is a really nice breakdown uh, in a tabular format of where we are, where all of our members on our project stand from a unity check standpoint. So what I like to do is come to the code check, right click, press sort and sort max to min. So this tells me, this sorts them from max to min so that I can pinpoint which members need to be, uh, need to have some attention. Uh, that way I can have them meet the criteria that I need them to meet. And we also have some shear check, unity check values and some more specifics regarding the capacities as well. Next, we can take a look at the suggested design spreadsheet. So this is basically a perk of having set up a design rule in the beginning. So when we gave the program the constraints for an optimal design for our structure, it was able to come up with a suggested shape based on that. So it looks like we actually oversized our members based on the uh, applied loads. So the program has actually recommended that we can downsize to an HSS two by two by two and 
uh, if we wanted to actually adopt these shapes, it would be as easy as right clicking in this spreadsheet and pressing solve again using the suggested shapes. I'm going to go ahead and click out of this spreadsheet. And now we can take a look at the detail report for individual members. So just click our detail report button. I'm going to go ahead and click on a bottom cord member here. And I'll just expand this detail report. And you can see here, you get a nice interface of the shape you're looking at, the, all of the input data, the specifics of the material properties, uh, the shape properties, design properties as well, which includes unbraced lengths. And then you get each individual force and even stress diagrams for your member, which are actually expandable once you click on them. These can be changed from envelope to a particular load combination as well. We'll go ahead and click out of these. Additionally, we have expandable calculations for each individual limit state check based on the code selected, which is shown here. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose the one with the maximum unity check, which is this bending plus axial interaction. So this is a great breakdown of each individual variable that gets plugged into the governing equation here. And here's actually the code reference that corresponds to the governing equation. So this is just a quick look at how to model a steel truss as well as analyze and design it using RISA 3D. For more information about RISA 3D, please visit risa.com.